I stopped believing in God when my sister and I got caught shoplifting at Gemco. Gemco was a membership one-stop shop. It was the forerunner to Costco. By the mid-1980s, it would no longer exist thanks to the hostile behavior of capitalists. Target would buy the old Gemco buildings and start its empire then. Kathy and I couldn't have been older than seven and eight. I remember my brother sitting in the shopping cart as my mother pushed it around the store. It was a Saturday. My parents were shopping for a gift to take to a wedding on Sunday, a church wedding. We three kids would be at the ceremony, but not at the reception. We waited outside on the front porch of the house, hosting the reception. My parents went inside and delivered their gift and congratulations. Some fun. I should note that we were the kind of kids that no one would babysit. In a word, we were awful. So the reality of going to the church ceremony and not the reception was probably different than I remember. Kathy had priors. She had gotten caught stealing candy from a little shop called the Toy Box. The store owner threatened to call the police. Somehow my mother managed to work it out and Kathy wasn't to go back into the store. My mom banished me as well, even though I wasn't around when the crime went down. She didn't want any of us to go back into the store, most likely out of embarrassment. A few years later in junior high, I ventured back in to check it out before the store went out of business. By then there was no candy left to steal. I hate saying it was a different time, but it was. Compared to kids today, we were feral. We'd leave the house to go play and not return until dinner time, unsupervised. No one worried about us until it got dark. We'd walk the creeks and train tracks or ride our bikes into what was our downtown. It was more of a village than a town back then. Here's a fun memory. My mother used to send me to Lucky's Grocery with a note and a check for cigarettes. The cashiers would take the check, read the note, and send me back home with a pack or a carton of smokes. That didn't last long. As the community grew and gentrified, the quaint naivete of a small town disappeared. Like I said, a different time. We were sugar junkies. My grandparents enabled us with lifesaver books at Christmas, or Heath bars and other dime store candies when we came to visit. There was always some sort of sugary thing at grandma's, and she always had dessert. Always. Grandpa called dessert having a party. We loved it. My parents were always stressed out about feeding three growing kids. Desserts and cookies and other snack foods were restricted. And they punished us severely for sneaking into the Cool Whip or pie or whatever else was in the fridge. And Kathy was always sneaking the treats. One morning, my dad became infuriated with her for dipping into the fucking Cool Whip. He was yelling at her about how sneaky she was. He had her by one hand and took her in the kitchen and pulled out the cutting board. Pinning her hand down, he grabbed a knife with his other hand. Holding it up like he was about to chop, he yelled, Do you want me to cut your fingers off so you can't steal? Horrified, I screamed at him. Daddy, stop it! He did. I don't remember what happened after that. It's possible he sent us out to play. Adults are terrifying creatures. I don't remember how we figured out eating jello powder straight from the box, or sweetened Kool-Aid packets, or tang. Might have been cinnamon toast with butter and sugar. It could have been the pixie sticks that inspired us. It was fun to lick and dip or pour some sweet flavored granules into our mouths, not to mention the discoloration of our tongues. No hiding the evidence afterwards. Our sugar eating and thieving ways were a form of self-medication. Sugar was the reward for love not available. It was a double-edged sword. 
In line at the checkout, my sister and I were behind our parents and little brother in the shopping cart. There were the usual racks stocked with all sorts of shit for impulse buying, including little packets of sweetened Kool-Aid. You know where this is going, right? When we thought no one was looking, Kathy and I each snagged a packet of Kool-Aid. Kathy's went into her pocket. No one was the wiser. I opened mine. It was great. There I was, thinking we pulled off our heist. Remember what I said about evidence? As soon as we got settled into the back of the station wagon, my mom turned around from the front passenger seat. She said in her usual authoritarian voice, Give me the Kool-Aid. I know it's in your pocket. Give it to me. Busted. I handed it over and waited for her to go after Kathy next. Only she didn't. And like a good poker player, Kathy's face had no tell. So I said nothing and took the heat. This would be a pattern set for many years to come. We would be in church the following day. So I was to go to my room without dinner and pray to God for forgiveness. There was some other talk about how God would punish me if I didn't. I don't know. What? Repent? What the fuck did I know about any of that? I was eight years old, and we did not go to church. So there I sat on my bed while everyone ate dinner. I stared out the window with the lights off as the late afternoon turned into evening, waiting. Waiting for God to either punish me or forgive me. Motherfucker never showed up. Motherfucker never smote me. Motherfucker ghosted me. About the time I started to fall asleep, Kathy came up the stairs with a plate for me. I was to eat and go to bed. I ate, and Kathy took the plate back downstairs and returned to our room. Before we fell asleep, she asked me if I wanted some Kool-Aid. It was strawberry.